Hi, I'm artist Trisha Wiles, and this is my YouTube page where I explain to you the stories behind my pieces in a series I like to call Art Explained. And pretty pretty straightforward. Um, in this in this particular video, I'll be explaining to you the story behind my piece Ariel, and I love this piece. Uh, I love the story behind it. I love the finished product and I love that this is really aside from a very small painting I made about a year and a half ago um, This is really the first large piece where oil paint was my predominant medium um, I haven't always had the luxury of working with oil paint. It is a little bit more expensive than other types of paint um, and so I really love this painting for a variety of reasons so first of all the time that I made this painting was right before my 30th birthday. I'm 30 now, and uh, I was really, I was really having a go at uh, at uh, this whole concept of aging and turning 30, and what does a new decade mean, and what does it mean for a woman? You know, being a woman's the only point of reference I've ever known, and so really, my only experience with aging firsthand is that of a woman, and I think that it's a really interesting concept particularly in um, in a society and in a world that is so connected with tech and the media and pop culture um, where really the the vast majority of representation of women are those of young women and those of beautiful women and so really this painting is an exploration of well what does it mean if you're not a young woman and what does it mean if you're not a beautiful woman um, and what is beauty really? I mean, you know, it's commonly external. We always hear, oh, it's it's on the inside. Well, turn on the TV and you see otherwise because it's like, you know, most people on TV are supermodel quality, you know, looks wise. Um, and and it, it delivers a certain unspoken narrative. Um, well, does, does one's worth as a woman in particular expire at the point that their beauty does, at the point that their youth does, at therefore the point that their fertility does? You know, what, what determines the worth and the usefulness and the offering that a person has? Um, and I, what I hope to see in the coming years is a lot more older women who are coming to, you know, large media, you know, recognition and all of that. Um, but it's a little off topic. Um, so the story behind Ariel is, you know, it was a few days before my uh, 30th birthday and I was taking a nap and I was taking a nap out of necessity. Like there are some times in life where you take a nap out of luxury and then there are other times where you take a nap out of necessity. And this was one of those days I was alone at the house and it was a nap out of necessity. I was a little overwhelmed. I was feeling sad about the whole like turning 30 thing. What does it mean? Have I accomplished what I want to accomplish? What is, you know, all these factors. Um, and trust me, I know that pondering the, um, the way that aging feels is a luxury. I know that in many, many countries around the world, people don't have that luxury because the life expectancy is not as long. So age means something different. Um, I also know a lot of people my age and younger who have not made it to the age of 30, who are not gonna make it to the age of 30 by, by one disease or accident or another. Um, and so ultimately, I know in the core of my being that aging is a blessing and that it's an opportunity and that it's a privilege um, and that it's a resource, you know, time is a resource. And so when I look at the years ahead, it's, it's good to think, okay, how am I gonna use that? Um, but I can say it doesn't always feel that way. Intellectually, I may know that aging is a blessing and that it is an opportunity and it is a, a tool to be used to give back to other people, to be of service in some way. What is it? God only knows. I'm trying to find out. But So I know this, but it doesn't always feel that way. And on this day where I took this nap, 
I, it didn't feel that way. It felt almost like, oh, why is this happening to me? You know, I never thought that this would happen to me. How did this escape me when I was, you know, 22 and arrogant, you know, and kind of an asshole, you know, like I didn't, it, it just never dawned on me that like, yes, there are older people and one day I will be them, one of them, God willing. Um, and so anyway, all of this was happening and there was other stuff going on that I was dealing with, with you know, in a variety of different aspects in my life so I just felt very overwhelmed so this was a necessity nap and I laid down I think I slept probably like 12 and a half minutes tops um, as you always do when you need to sleep you like don't and but what happened was I woke up and something happened that had never happened before which was I woke up and in my brain was this color of blue and I can't explain why I was almost like thinking in color where this was the color that was in my brain, um, but I could not shake this color of blue. And why was this what I woke up thinking about? And only this, you know, it wasn't like, oh, here's a random color of blue. I got to build a pay. I got to do this for work. It was like, no, it's it was the color blue. And and what else? It was this pale grayish color of blue. And so I got off the couch and I, I went over to my paints and I started mixing because I was like, let me just see if I can replicate this color of blue in my brain. Can I translate it into an actual paint color? And so I started mixing a blue oil and a white oil, you know, and then folding in a little bit of black and then you know, is it too much gray or is it too gray? Is it not gray enough? Is it too pale? Is it not pale enough? You know, and I started tinkering. And by the time I had poured all of this paint into this, uh, you know, little mixer thing I used, it was like, there was so much paint there, but I stood back and I was like, this is the color. This is exactly the color. This is exactly the color that I woke up thinking about. And by the time I looked at it, like I said, there was so much paint that I was like, well, I gotta use it now because it's oil, so it's not cheap. And it's like, I gotta do something with it now because there's so much of it. And so what am I gonna do? Thankfully, I had a blank canvas. Sometimes my supplies are a little low depending on how many runs I go on and you know, whatever. Um, and so thankfully I had blank canvases. So I ran and I got this canvas and you know, Honestly, I was so excited to translate this color of blue that came to my brain that I really didn't even have time to really acknowledge the feelings of intimidation of this is my first oil painting. What am I going to do? How does the medium work? You know, usually there's like this period of exploration that I go through with all these thoughts where it's like, you know, how, how am I going to do this? But with this one, it really just came out of me where I was like, this needs to, you know, I took a huge palette knife and I started working with it and the painting just started to reveal itself, you know, um, the, the colors here, if you get close, you can see some colors and that's actually an accident. So there was another oil painting that I had started working on um, and that oil, because I had just gotten these oils, so I was kind of just tinkering and experimenting on a canvas with them. And what wound up happening was, I don't know if it was the brush or the side of the canvas, but somehow this got bumped up against that one and that one was still wet because uh, obviously oil takes forever to dry. And I had worked on that days ago, but anyway, so it bumped up against it and it got this color in on it. And I was like, oh no, is this gonna like ruin it? And then I was kind of like, nah, let's, let's go with it. Um, and so I started incorporating the multicolored streaks uh, and then I really loved the way that the red was looking. So I kind of stole a little bit of the uh, red from the other painting and I started scraping it in here in various ways. Um, but what's interesting and what how Ariel, this painting, got its name um, was that at a certain point in the painting and at a certain point, I as an artist sometimes feel like there needs to be more brush strokes, there needs to be more work done on this, but I just don't know where to go. And I just don't know 
what like nothing is coming to the surface of of what is supposed to happen there uh, and where a brush stroke supposed to go there's no inkling there's no urge there's no like push in that direction or inspiration and so that was the point I was at at this painting and normally at that point I set the painting aside and I just let it dry and then I come back later when I do feel the inspiration for the for the later layers um, but for this one, it was like I had that feeling where I knew that more needed to be added. I wasn't quite sure what was supposed to be added, but I also knew that now was the time to do it. Um, and so in that situation, sometimes a different perspective can really come in handy. And so instinctively, I stood up because I like to work low to the ground and I like to work very closely with my paint so I can see exactly what it's doing. I explore it in that way like a real nerd. Um, but it's like I like to work very closely with my paintings but sometimes when you look at a painting so closely it's kind of like the Monet effect you know like where they say oh it's beautiful from far away but once you get up close eh. um, and so for this it's like changing that perspective. Um, so I realized, you know, like I'm not seeing it from the perspective I'm I'm at. I'm too close to the situation. I'm 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 so close. I'm in it. I can't I can't have any perspective when I'm in it. So I stood up, and I started looking at it, and sure enough, the remaining brush strokes that needed to be taken were revealed to me. You know, I don't know what you want to call it, but the ideas came to me when I pulled back and I you know stood over the painting and I looked at it from a different angle. Um, and and what an interesting painting and what an interesting process to undergo because at the time I wasn't self-aware enough to realize like oh there's an analogy there that's a metaphor it's like no I just was making the painting and I was like oh, I can't really see it from here I'll stand up and it was only after the fact only after I stood up saw it for the whole picture saw what else needed to be added but also what needed to be left alone. And so it was like, I was able to get this better picture of the painting and what it was supposed to be and what it really is. Um, and so that's why it's called Ariel. You know, Ariel is a different view of things. You know, um, an Ariel view is really the, the, the concept that inspired the name of this. Um, and, and the name really came to me just you know, it came as Ariel, and I was like, well, what does that even mean? And I kind of knew Ariel view, but when I Googled the definition of Ariel, it really, really fit. Um, and so the story behind this painting is struggling with a concept, aging as a woman, which, you know, when you're in it, when I'm, when I'm in it, when I'm that close to it, I can't always see it for what it is. I can't always see the beauty of what is, the beauty of what could be, what needs to be added, what else can be done. Um, you know, and that's what I see when I look at this painting, is I look at, when I see Ariel, I think of our perspectives on things and how our perspectives really determine everything. You know, I, I know that aging for many women is, is a difficult thing. I, I don't think it should be, but that doesn't change the fact that for me it has been. Um, but when I look at this painting, I just see sometimes all we need to do is pull back and look at the bigger picture and our perspectives can change. Because when I was in it with this painting, I couldn't, I couldn't see anything. I, I was blocked off from that inspiration. Um, and I count it no coincidence that on the day I was struggling with this concept of aging, a painting who's the literal embodiment of perspective and changing your perspective to, to accomplish something, um, that that's what, what came through to me. And so I hope that you've enjoyed learning about Ariel. It is, if I do say so myself, it is a beautiful painting. It is one of my favorites. I am so excited to work more with oils because I love their texture. I haven't always had the money to, uh, or honestly the courage to, because when something costs a lot of money, I don't know about you, but I get a little like, oh, I don't wanna ruin it. Uh, but there wasn't that with this, and it, it, it inspired me with this boldness that, with the same boldness that I showed when I, you know, developed this color of blue and sat there tinkering and whatever and then I was so gung-ho on translating that and working with it that I didn't even have time to be self-conscious or you know insecure about anything I hope that I and all of you can have the same boldness as we go out and age remembering that it is truly truly a blessing 
um, and that we sometimes you just got to lean into it. You know, I um, I went to school at the New York uh, Theological Seminary, and uh, my professor, Dr. Edward Hunt, once said, "When we're when delivering sermons, throw your shoulder into it." Um, and and I remember that in a lot of different aspects in life is you know if you're gonna do it throw your shoulder into it really go for it um, and that's what I think when I look at this painting I think about the perspective and I think about the thrilling aspect of just going for it and drowning out those voices um, of doubt and insecurity by just throwing your shoulder into it so I hope that you've enjoyed the story of Ariel. I have loved sharing it with you. And uh, feel free to comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks. I don't know why I waved. That was cheesy.